What up everybody, it's Sassy Assassin here, back with another Amberlynn Reed reaction video. So as you can see, I have a, a mask on because my pores need it, and it's, this takes a while to settle, so uh, yeah, it's staying on. Anyways, um, I'm doing well, my bladder infection is going away, and pretty much I've been stuck at home like the rest of us waiting out this in, in quarantine and uh basically streaming on twitch so yeah not much going on in my life right now but anyways uh i do have a video that is go my life update that is going up with this video so if you're interested please watch it's more like a stream of consciousness consciousness kind of video so it, it's not really formulated it's just Blah. But anyways, um, let's get into this video, and I'm going to have it sped up because I really just want to get this done and over with so I can wash this off my face, and yeah. And just, I'm going to have it at 1.5, like one, because yeah, just... Hey guys, so welcome to Wednesday weigh-in. So how I do my Wednesday weigh-ins is I talk about each day, how I felt, what I did, if I was on track, off track, and I think what I do differently than like the typical weight loss video is that every day I do weigh in to talk about how much I lost each day. I like doing that because it shows where my fluctuations are. Like if I fluctuate and gain like three pounds one day, I'm able to sit there and be like, okay, well obviously I ate something wrong that caused me to have that happen and then if I lose a lot of weight the next day then I know okay well that meal plan is working really well and I understand that fluctuations do happen so last Wednesday on March 11th I weighed 514.8 so in my little notes what I wrote for that day is that I did overeat I had mashed potatoes shredded cheese and peas for some reason that whole like recipe it's not really even a recipe but it's just really good I thoroughly enjoyed it and then I also had some peanut M&Ms but what I would like to say about that is I stopped myself from eating them before it got too bad. I actually gave the rest to Becky. I knew I could easily eat the whole bag and just sit there and just continuously eat them and eat them and eat them, but I did stop myself and it was like a lot of restraint. It was really hard, I'm gonna be honest. So the next day on March 12th, I weighed in at 514. Then why even give yourself the. Oh, excuse me. Then why even put the temptation in front of you if you knew that it was gonna be hard? Like, Jesus. <laughs> what the. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Too, so that means I was down 0.6 from the day prior. So this is the day where I noticed that after I have a smoothie in the morning, I get really dizzy. Um, it's something that I noticed for a few days now, but on that day, March 12th, it was really bad. And it almost felt like I was actually going to like pass out, even though I knew I wasn't. And I think the biggest reason for that might be is because I do do IF, where I don't eat for a very big, large portion of the day. You and need to have more I protein in those smoothies. Like with a smoothie, for some reason, I don't think it's like, adding up with my body and it's not really it's, I guess it's not really good for it so I have stopped smoothies in the morning and now I eat things like Luna bars because that has less sugar hasn't made me um dizzy at all sometimes I'll just have like turkey bacon has protein and, and like, a laughing cow cheese on top um and those things have definitely been making me feel a lot better if you guys have the water um it's just running in the kitchen I hope it's do you water. notice that all, everything that's making her feel better has protein I mean if she were to just to add a, a like a pe like some sort of source of protein to her shakes, she would do a lot better. Like, I mean, maybe she'll get there. I don't know. Annoying or anything. So for that day, like honestly, everything went really well. So the next day on March 13th, I weighed 512.2, which was a two pound loss from the day prior, which this day actually hit down 60.2 pounds. So that's exciting. Although I don't feel like super excited about it because like I have other goals I want to reach. So that was my first day with a new breakfast, which I had rice cakes with PB2 on it, which I actually did vlog. And I really did enjoy that. Although I realized while I was eating it, I put too much PB2. So I ended up taking some off and then it was perfect. And on that day, Becky and I talked about how she can help me with binging because a lot of the times when I binge, it's like she enables I you. Ask her, hey, we make me ramen. You guys know that whole story. It's whatever. Um, it's not her fault. It's my fault. I'm asking for it. The end. But I told Becky if that ever happens again, I want her to tell me things like, "Don't do it. You're gonna be mad at yourself. You're gonna feel super guilty," and just kind of be like super, super stern about it. And she has agreed that she's going to do that. So, so basically, so basically, you're telling her, "Don't enable me." Okay. March 14th, I weighed in at 509.6, which, which was a 2.6 weight loss from the day prior. So that day, I woke up with 
really bad self-loathing. I honestly just like hated myself. And the reason why is because of my lymphedema. It's been on my mind a lot lately. Normally I just like put it in the back of my mind, like back when I wasn't losing any weight. But now that I am losing weight, it's like parts of my body are getting smaller, but then other parts of my body that have lymphedema, which is my right calf and my lower stomach, those areas are getting smaller. It's making me feel super like self-conscious. It's making me hate myself because it's not- Okay, here's sort of what I don't get. If you're if she's actually losing this weight that she claims that she's lo losing, bleh, that she claims that she is u losing, then why is it that her lymphedema isn't going down? From what I know, or, and I've I've heard one of I've talked to people who have lymphedema. When they've lost weight, the lymphedema went down. So things just don't add up. And I think that's the part that freaks me out the most is I'm always gonna have like a deformed body And I know it's like a very bad way of thinking, but that's just where I was at on that day And she needs to day, get it looked at a she lot of messages and comments saying I only lost weight because I was sick I lost 50 pounds in January because I was sick couldn't eat because I was sick a lot of people were saying those things And I was already hating myself so much that day that I was reading that stuff and it honestly really got to me Well, and I mean the, the reality is though she was on a lot of antibiotics and Antibiotics in their nature are appetite suppressants, so, like, that's a big part of wh wh why she also lost weight. She, you know, there's no use in denying that. But, oh, excuse me. But, like, did, I mean, did she not try during those times? I don't know. Maybe she was... Uh, trying along with being sick because I've done that I mean I'm a chronically ill person and you know uh, I have you know with the regardless of whether I'm sick or not I still have to try with my diet you know I can't just be like oh I'm sick so you know I'll just diet you know and, and eat healthy when I'm well I mean because more often than not I'm sick so it's just like yeah so yeah is the whole thing about losing 50 pounds in January because I was sick. I only lost 18 pounds in January and a lot of people were saying I couldn't eat while sick. When I had tonsillitis, which was literally only for a week and out of that week there's only three days where it hurt to eat but the thing is I still ate. Your girl still binged and ice cream was involved. A lot of it. So I, I don't like quite understand that but then once I was done with the whole tonsillitis things I was, I was able to get back on track. It, it's just confusing because it's like being sick had nothing to do with the fact that I sat there and I would say no to binging a lot of the days. Like, yes, in a month when we look at the average, you know, I, I do binge. Like, I'm not 100% perfect, but I used to binge every single day. Now, if I look at a month and I can sit there and be like, wow, I only binged four days out of that month. That's crazy. That's because I said no to binging up most to easily 60 times. So then you, what so then she needs to examine the days that she did binge <clears throat> and then as to why she chose to binge those four days. But I'm going to say this. I am seeing a lot more self-awareness coming from Amber, which is a good thing. She is looking at her mess ups and she's looking at why she's doing it and she's trying, she's analyzing it, which is good. It means that she's, she really is being mindful but at the same time i really think she there are things that she needs to do like get health insurance see specialists for her certain issues i think if she were to you know take do those things she could do even better because she'd have the knowledge um of, from the doctors and I think it would make th th make things emotionally easy for her. She wouldn't be so stressed out about it, because you know if I would be, I too would be stressed out if I have lymphedema and it wasn't, you know, and that if I was losing a, a good amount of weight and the lymphedema wasn't going down, like I, I too would be stressed out. Also, forgive my messy bed. Winston has been on and off and off and on all day today, and I just don't, I didn't see the point in. Like, uh, you know, remaking my bed because he, like, two minutes later, he would just jump on it and it would be like Tornado Alley again. So I just left it because he he's just in that, 
on that in that stage right now so because I ate smaller portions and it's because I was trying it's not because I was just like Ooh, I'm gonna eat whatever I want and weight loss is just falling off me because I'm sick that doesn't make sense because I have been sick in the past I have been sick a lot in the past I have had tons of infections and I have done nothing but maintain a very heavy weight or I have gained and gained and gained so it was just very insulting it takes away like all the hard work and I think that might be a really big reason why like oh I'm down sick you know I, I I don't feel happy for myself I admit I though I have actually said that 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 her being sick is a big reason why she's lost weight and I do sort of feel bad for it because, you know, she is right, though. She's been sick in the past, and she's still maintained weight. So the whole losing weight because you're sick doesn't really add up when you really think about it. But um, I think it has a little to do with her losing a little bit more weight because if she's on antibiotics, like I said, and with them being appetite suppressants in their nature... She's, it's, it's, she's more likely to eat less because she did her body. She doesn't want to eat as much as she usually does. The only problem, and this is something that I've run, uh, that I've run into is that when you're done with the course of antibiotics and when you're not on any antibiotics, it's like maybe a week or so after you get this surge of just hunger and that is when, for me, that is when I binge because I just, I'm so hungry all of a sudden and I just can't stop eating. But I have thousands of people telling me that I could be doing better and it does mess with your brain. I don't care if it was just like one person in my life saying these things to me or if it's a thousand people online saying these things to me. I put in the efforts to lose weight like I never have before. So that is why I'm losing weight. So the next day on March 15th, I weighed in at 507.4, which was a 2.8 weight loss from the day prior. So that was actually the lowest I've ever been at 64 pounds lost on that day. Like, whoa. So this day was particularly hard for me because the whole virus. Um, I know a lot of people are suffering with worry and anxiety. I wanna cry just talking about it. Um, this has just been, it's been scary. Um, it's been sad, it's been heartbreaking, it's just, we've never been through something like this. Um, I'm gonna speak for myself, I'm 29 years old. So in the last 29 years, nothing like this has happened. And I don't know what to expect. I don't, I just don't, it's just the unknown is scary. Everything that's going on in the world right now is like, it makes me wanna just go in a corner and just eat all those worries away, all those feelings away. And I'm having to fight myself every single second not to overeat because when I feel this way, I have always turned to food and it's always made me feel so much better while I'm eating it. And you know, <clears throat> I was mad at her yesterday because after seeing that her previous video and how flippant she was about it and how unaware and self-involved she was, it just ticked me the fuck off. But it's I can see now that the reality of the situation is finally hitting her, which is good. At least she's recognizing the fact that this is a serious issue. And she should be scared. She she is a, a vulnerable person. And she needs to, re you know, my, my only thing that I, I'm going to criticize her for is that she didn't have the enough self-awareness to go and prepare, you know, and actually go out, go out to the stores when they still had stuff. You know, like, but you know, there are a lot of people, I'm sorry, I keep on pausing. I just, um, I just, when I drink soda, sometimes I burp, what I burp a lot and it's like, I'm trying to stop myself from burping. Um, there are a lot of people that I talk to and, and a lot of people that are still, despite the fact that pretty much the entire country, pretty much the w entire world is like literally on lockdown. They're still not taking it seriously. Like I read this and I know there are some people who say, don't put, make po put politics into your videos. Like, let me just say this. It's my, it's my, my channel, my videos. And if I want to make a political statement, I'm going to make a political statement. And if you don't like it, then don't watch. But, um, 
there's this I, I, I saw on, on my Facebook and this woman um, she uh, posted a screenshot of a Twitter post of this woman saying my, my parents are Trump supporters they despite everything that's going on they still believe it's a it's a hoax they're elderly and they're still going out and acting as if everything's normal. And I'm just like, there. I know, I talk to people, like there are some people that I talk to that have that same attitude, even if they're not Trump supporters. Well, some of them are Trump supporters, like a majority of them are Trump supporters, and they're still saying, despite that now Trump is taking this seriously, they're saying, well, this is a hoax. You know, this isn't real. Like, it just, the ignorance is there. Like, I, I, I just can't believe that there are people out there that are still acting like this is no big deal when, I mean, the response the, from, you know, is, you know, basically a lockdown. Like, how can you not take this seriously? Just really blows my mind. Like, this is, this is not just some flimsy, simple cold or a cousin to a cold. This is something major because there's no, there's no cure. There's no vaccine for it right now. I don't even think they really know where it's come from. Like I heard it came from like bats or whatever, but you know, and, and plus it's so contagious. I heard that it is even, it can stay airborne for days so it's just like, this is a serious issue. Like, we are not in any way prepared for this. And now, uh, my state is a statewide um, emergency. And I even heard on the grapevine that they're thinking about enacting martial law for the entire country, which that's going to be, I mean, wow. I, I mean, I can't even believe it. But... Anyways, I just wanted to, to say that because it's just, for me, when I hear, especially Trump supporters, despite everything, still saying that this is a hoax and that it's not that big of a deal, it just really ticks me off. It really ticks me off. So, like I said, if you don't like me talking about it in political terms, like, I, don't, I mean, this is not even really political terms. I mean, it's, how do I, see, it's, when I say, you know, it's so, because see, how polarized our, you know, our our country is, like, and politically how polarized we are, when you say Trump, it's automatically, it becomes political, you know what I mean? It's just like, but really, I'm not trying to, like, make it political, but um, because of how ill-informed and moronic that Trump ha, Trump is, and because people who support him will literally eat up anything that he says, because, and because he said it was a hoax, he, these people are consciously making a decision that this is not a big deal, when clearly all the evidence points to saying it is a big deal. But because they're Trump supporters, because they believe in him so much that they'd be willing to disregard all the facts, they're not only putting themselves at risk, but they're putting others at risk. It's and, and this has nothing to do with Trump or anything, but what, all, what also gets me is that in Florida, they are still allowing the beaches to be open, and there are a ton of like college students that have gone down there for spring break, like as per you, you know, as as if it's normal. Like I d honestly don't understand why Florida would even allow the beaches to be open. I mean, it's like a little breeding ground for this, and I mean, you would think that these people would be cautious, you know? I mean, how? I mean, I, I would love to go swimming right now. That'd be awesome, but I'm not, you know, I. I I, I wouldn't risk not only, you know, I wouldn't risk my life and then 
possibly risk other people's lives if I if I contracted the virus just so I could, you know, swim and shit like that. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous how stupid people can be because of how ill-informed they are. I'm sorry. I, I'm uh, just kind of bone of contention right now. Sorry for me. And, you know, I know there's some people that don't like me talking politically, but this is my channel. I have a right to, to voice my opinion. And, I, it's, and I'm not going to stop voicing my opinion. And now it's like, I can't turn to food. So I have to, like, suffer. Like, literally suffer through the anxiety and the pain and the worry. Oh, and you know, and shut up, girl. And it's scary because, like, I don't have that outlet no more, so I'm having to find other ones. So I Shut up. You know what? Oh, I'm having to suffer because, you know, I can't turn to food. You know, there are people out there right now that don't even have the bare necessities because they can't get it. Like, seriously? You're, you're complaining about you can't turn to food? And she's like, oh my, just as I'm saying, as self-aware as she is appearing in this video, there, she still lacks a certain amount of self-awareness. Because if she was completely self-aware and, you know, and fully understood the enormity of the situation, she would not have made that statement. Like, Jesus. Like, shut up, Amber. So what? I mean, you're lucky to even have food. Like, oh my god. I was able to succeed and I did not binge. On that day, I was also being pointed out that I do pay attention to calories. If you guys watched my what I ate today, I didn't even notice it, but in the video- I, I thought you weren't even counting calories! You don't- Oh my god, this pisses me off. Girl, make up your fucking mind. Either you're counting calories or you're not. Stop contradicting yourself. What is up with these girls saying, one minute, oh, I'm doing this, the next minute, I'm not doing that. Like, and then when people call her out, on, call them out on it, on their shit, their contradictions, they're just like, oh, you're bullying me, harassing me, you know, whatever. Like, bitch, shut up. I kept talking about calories, even though in the beginning of it I said, I don't count calories, I don't pay attention to calories. A lot of people were pointing out to me, okay, why does she keep talking about calories if she doesn't pay attention to calories? So I just sit down and like really process, like, how do I decide what I'm going to eat? And you guys, I pay attention to calories every single time I eat. I make sure that my breakfast stays at a certain amount of calories, I make sure that my lunch stays at a certain amount of calories, and my dinner. Um, I'm allowed to, you know, go off base there by like 100 or 200 calories, but it's not like I'm sitting there logging everything and restricting myself because even if I did eat a little bit more one day it's okay because I felt like my body needed it versus oh I just want to binge or overeat like if I eat a little bit more in a day because I seriously felt like oh my god I'm actually okay so in a roundabout way you're just basically watching calories to an extent so you and watching how your whether your body feels like it needs a little bit more and you're only allowing yourself so much so you're going to pick foods that are going to be perfectly portioned, but are also going to fill you up. That's pretty much what you're saying. Greater than usual, then that's okay. I think that's what I was talking about when it came to like intuitive eating. But I just appreciate you guys, a lot of you guys, pointing out that, girl, you do pay attention to calories, just admit it. Because I do. Because example, when I went to Ruby Tuesday, you know, what I originally wanted was something that was like 800 plus calories. And I was like, well, no. <laughs> so I did choose something that was less calories. Because when it comes to me, if I didn't know anything about calories and I was to sit there and do like intuitive eating, I wouldn't lose weight. That's a point blank period. But since I do know a lot about calories and I do look at the nutrition label and I do pay attention to serving size, I think that's really what's helping me. Next day on March 16th, I weighed in at 505.2. So that was a 2.2 weight loss from the day prior. And my notes on that day is just, I consistently Excuse all me. day wanted to overeat. I wanted to binge my, like literally you guys, my emotions are like, I don't know what they're doing. It's like a tornado is inside of my body. You know, and, 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 and here's the thing. I, I understand I understand where she's coming from with the, the anxiety and wanting to binge during this, this crisis because I admit that I've also been feeling the same way and I've actually binged a couple times. And I feel really bad about it because I know we have to conserve. But the idea of not knowing if there's going to be enough food the next time you go shopping, the idea of having, you know, of this crisis has triggered me a bit and I'm, I'm having to 
I had I talked to my mom about it. I said, "Hey, I'm having some issues with binging and stuff, and I need your help to make sure that I'm not going to binge and take more food than I'm supposed to, because I kind of feel like the similar situation as it was when the binging really started, and what and that you know a number of years ago, and yeah, it is scary, and and for people like me, for people like her." It kind of has the effect where you you want to eat more because you're afraid that you're gonna go hungry. That's yeah, it's it's a really fucked up situation. But I, I'm I'm getting through it, you guys. Um, I'm just being very picky about what I eat and trying to. I mean, like I I I, I pretty much am just allowing myself to eat so much, regardless of what it is. Because I couldn't be that picky, considering the fact that, you know, there is only so much in the store. So, not everything that I eat is necessarily what I would eat under eat, eat, that uh, what I would eat under normal circumstances. But it was like, it was either that or nothing. So, I'm just really watching how much I eat and... And crap like that. I mean, the biggest thing that's actually really helped me is I, I was able to get um, plenty of, like, nutrition shakes and stuff like that. Like, I got some Ensure. I got some of the um, the organic ones that I usually get. And then I got um, Premier, like, a, a box of the Premier Protein ones as well. And um, one of them, though, is, like, this veggie and protein one. And this surprisingly not a lot of fiber in it but there's a lot of good nutrients and healthy very healthy greens like um chlor chlorella i think it's called but um i have what i usually do when i have the one that doesn't have a lot of fiber but it has a, a good amount of greens and stuff is i put fiber i have this big like box of this nicillium fiber powder and it's like a vegan brand that i bought like couple months ago and I use that to put into the smoothie and I um just because it'll give me a little extra fiber and it ha and it would and it fills me up and it um it's a healthy source of fiber pretty much cuz sometimes I have to do that with certain, with my shakes because if I don't feel like I'm getting enough fiber and when I'm trying to fill myself up and fill myself up with stuff that's healthy, because with my gastroparesis, I can't exactly do like raw ve fruit and vegetables. So I sometimes have to use a supplement like a fiber powder to add the extra fiber that's been taken out of, taken out of it. And actually, it works. So um, I find myself being filled up with that, and I'm not taking food. You know what I mean? So I know you know, relying on shakes isn't actually the healthiest, but I still am eating, like, regular food, but it's just, like, I'm not eating as much. So, when April 1st comes around, um, I'm gonna buy... I think I'm gonna stick with Premier Protein for now, because I feel like that's, like, been the one that's filled me up the most, and that may be an insurer, and I'm, you know, I'm probably gonna have, like, maybe one or two of those a day, just so, um, or maybe just one a day, and then, because I, I still do have my green grass powder. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's really helped. I might buy some of that peanut butter powder that she bought and actually put it in my shakes in case I can't get, like, um, it's, it's the ones that are more like the green grass powder. So that way, if I do run out of protein shakes and I can't get any more, then I can use the peanut butter powder within the, the green shakes, um, to have, to add that healthy source of protein, so, yeah, sorry, another, oh god, another tangent there, it's, I know a lot of people are dealing with this, um, and I do also want to point out that on that day, I said no to a brownie, and it was the hardest thing I've done in a long time, and I know a lot of people are going to watch this and be like, you are pathetic, but, if you struggle with binge eating or if you've str struggled with like hardcore overeating or food addiction, then you understand how powerful a no is. So the next day on March 17th. No, I'm, yeah, I'm not dissing her for that. That's a good. Like eight weight loss from the day prior. 
And I wrote down that I was upset. Okay, where's the way in? I only lost point eight. So losing point eight in one day is amazing. A lot of people wish for that. But for some reason, because I was losing so well in the last few days, like I was down like two pounds and then 2.2 and then 2.8, 2.6. Like I wanted more of that. I want to lose this weight fast because I'm feeling so much better. I just can't even imagine how my body's going to feel when I just continue losing. And it's just, I just, I want to lose this weight. Like that's a point blank period. So for some reason, I was really upset about that. And I actually put a quote down what I said yesterday. I said, everything would be better while in a bed with Ben and Jerry. Because again, another day where I wanted to binge my feelings away. And I literally could not stop thinking about a pint of ice cream. Like that was, it was pretty bad. So that's what I've been enjoying. You need, this is saying, this is the problem with Amber. And Chantel. And, P and YouTubers like her. They rely solely on YouTube. For their income. And the problem is, it's not enough really. You're at home. You're not interacting with other people really. Or if, you know, and she's only interacting with the same people. And now, I mean, in, under normal circumstances, it's, I mean, she needs to get a job. She needs to have a hobby and do things that are, don't evolve, involve YouTube and food. Maybe start streaming on Twitch, whatever, or maybe go and volunteer. I don't know. But, like, in this quarantine situation, like, she just needs to start doing more and focusing more, you know? I mean, I mean, she's at, when another gets, another thing that gets me, she's acting like this quarantine is such a big deal for her. And really it's not because she's always in quarantine. Like she's always at home, stuck at home for weeks at a time. And she only goes out to grocery shop. So this should be a cinch for her, really. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, the the, ex, the, add, the the added scariness is catching the virus, but the whole quarantine and having to stay at home, like, it's not that big of a deal if you do it all the time. I mean, that's why I've been able to cope better, because I'm a homebody, and there, I mean, I can stay home for long stretches of time, whatever. I mean, the only thing that bothers me is not being able to go to the gym, and um, that's, that's, it's just... Oh, I, I'm going to be canceling my membership this month in, in April, and I'm just, I'm just really upset about it. Because, I, like I said, I, I've said before, I don't know how long this, this shit is going to last, and I don't want to spend money on something that I can't use. But again, another day of success. Like, you guys, I have weeks where I'm able to say no to wanting to overeat. I'm able to say no to the binges. I'm very strong. But then there are weeks where I'm just not, where I literally am just not strong enough. And that's just part of this process and something that I'm going to have to continue to accept that sometimes I am weak. But this week, I was not weak. So today, on Wednesday, March 18th, I weighed in at... Good for her. At 503.8. So that means from the day prior, I lost 0.6. So that means this week, I am down 11 pounds. Down 11 pounds. I hope, I honestly hope that, that this is real. I mean, I do see a slight difference. I'm not going to lie. I do see a slight difference. But, not that big of a difference. But see, she's going to have to lose a hell of a lot more for to see a real big difference. But there is, there is, a, there is differences there. Slight. If you, if you really look. So that means in total, I've lost 68.6 pounds. So that means I'm pretty much down 70 pounds because in 1.4 or 1.6, I will be down exactly 70 pounds. Can we just like, wow, celebrate? So down 11 pounds, that's really freaking good. I, for some reason, I just feel like I'm not doing good enough and it is the craziest feeling because in the past I would be like thrilled and like bragging about losing 11 pounds, but it's just like- You I'm are bragging I'm now. I'm losing two pounds in a week. And you guys, I just- for some reason, just subconsciously, mentally, I don't know what's going on. I just feel like I'm not doing good enough. And I think it's because I want to lose more, but yet I'm doing everything I need to. Like I'm eating small portions. I'm cooking for myself. I am saying no to binges, overeating. So it's like I'm doing everything that I can. So I need to just let my body do its thing. It'll, it'll lose what it wants when it wants. I do need to be proud of the 11 pound weight loss this week. And I am. And I just, I cannot wait to be in the 400s. I think that's what it is. I think it's because that's like my like goal that I've set in mind is like, I want to be in the 400 so bad I don't want to ever see the 500s again so to lose that since I'm 503.8 to, to what I have to lose to get to 400 sorry I'm like stumbling on my words is 3.8 or like four pounds so I honestly can't wait and I feel like that'll definitely happen this week I'm crossing my fingers because I feel like 
I'm starting to lose a little less every day now, like 0.6 and 0.8, but I mean, it's definitely possible. So I hope you guys had a good week. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe and doing everything you can to continue staying safe. We are all in this together and it's scary. And I just hope we get through it. Every time I start wanting to talk about it, I get emotional. Okay, so let's not talk about it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. You see, here's the thing. As thrilled as I am at the prospect of her being 503 pounds, because it's way less than she was before, Looking at her, I have a hard – see, I'm looking at this picture now, and I do, like, I do see a slight difference. I do see slimmer hips, but it's not very much. But, I mean, I don't know. The thing of it is, is that as she claim, if she, if she's – I'm going to just say allegedly. If she's allegedly losing all this weight, and if she continues – and if she's lying – and but says and continues to lie and says, "Well, I'm down to this weight, and yet she looks the same or even bigger." Then it'll be on her. So Amber, I really hope you are losing the weight. I really hope this is real and it's not just you just fucking around because you, <laughs> the only person you're hurting at this point would be yourself. But. She's allegedly losing weight, so I'm going to leave it at that. Anyways, I forgot to put the disclaimer in the beginning, but I know this is kind of stupid, but I just want to know, let you guys know, this video is under the Fair Use Act of 1976, or 8, I hope I'm right. Um, this video is not meant for children. This video is not to bully and harass, or harass anyone. This video is for commentary, thoughts, opinions, and a little bit of parody mixed in, so... The reason why I'm not putting my regular intro and outro in is just I don't really feel like it for these videos. But there, I just wanted to put that out there. Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. Peace out, my ninjas, and stay safe out there.